hello and welcome everyone to another autopilot test so today we have firmware update 2020.4.1 and besides a few minor changes which i will cover in the conclusion also um, the main thing that i want to test again is how does autopilot behave and are there any more improvements that we are seeing um, in terms of the previous update so let's see what's what So here we have the Hillcrest, where at the top everything is going fine for over a year now. And the uh, interesting part is at the bottom, where the uh, two lanes merge into one and the uh, lane markings disappear a little bit. Let's see if it will go to the left, yes or no. A very tiny bit, but it stayed more or longer on the right side than it used to. So I think there's a little bit of an improvement on that level. So yeah, that's good. Right, so here we're coming up on the infamous S curve. Last update was not good because it was going, um, it was not going slower before the curve as it should be. So it actually went over the center line and then started beeping all over the place. So let's see if this update gives us some improvement on that let's hope there's no car from the other side looking good so far yeah it is again it's keeping it in check rather quickly but it is again going over the line and if there was another car coming from the other side that just would have been disastrous so Tesla you still need to fix this one it used to be okay again here why do we need to go over the line in such a slow pace and such a slow turn um, so tesla you need to fix this um, it used to be good where the car just uh, slowed down before the curve um, and this is due to the maximum lateral acceleration that we have of three meters per second squared based on the un ece r79 regulation by the way as a small update on that um, there is a new workshop regarding those regulations that will be held in Geneva on uh, February 10th to 14th, I think. Um, so let's hope that we get some improvements approved there and Tesla can implement the higher accelerations. Another test here when we enter the highway is if I use the auto lane change. Again, it's going really close here then going back to the center so let me apply the auto lane change i've got navigate on autopilot yeah and now it's blinking again like why are you blinking there's no reason why it should do that um, so yeah it's it's kind of weird i just entered the highway and then it feels like it needs to move over the lane um, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird because the other traffic was in the way and everything. Anyway, let's carry on with the next part. So let's see if the automatic exit taking, if that is still working properly. So with this exit, I've had some good and bad cases. Um, the exit is split into two lanes. Sometimes it takes the first one, sometimes it takes the second one. I don't know why. It's blinking. Yeah, taking the first part. Um, I've had cases where it carries on and it wants to only take the second lane here. Um, haven't found any correlation to weather or traffic environment why it actually does that variation. But um, this one is good now. So one thing that I've noticed also is um, that the navigate on autopilot, if you have poor weather detection, that is actually not based on the actual weather detection. Because if I now just, I'm, I'm navigating on autopilot, if I just turn on the wipers in full mode, which is going to cancel the lane change. Then it says poor weather detected. So it is actually based on 
um, the motion of the uh, of the wipers if they go for maybe like 10 seconds or something like now it's okay again but if they go for like 10 seconds uh, on a continuous uh, interval then yeah it actually says well you have poor weather so it's not detected on the deep uh, rain neural network it's just based on mechanical detection of the windshield wipers okay I'm going to test here something um, where the truck is involved so let me just go to the outside lane and then use navigate on autopilot and I go to the right now okay, the car is at first refusing to do the lane change right now and it just doesn't do it so let's test the auto lane change blinking yeah that's still the same as it was in the previous update I'm getting notified still way too early for an upcoming exit that I need to take so going to the right it still detects the car from way back and it needs a huge gap to be able to perform the lane change um, this is also part of that UN ECE R79 regulation that we are all trying to get going in the right direction instead of uh, being too much on the cautious side to be a little bit more lenient to uh, allow progress technological progress to actually happen instead of holding it back here we have the exit let's see if the car slows down because well um, it is a rather short exit of course I have the car in front of me slowing down it is weaving a little bit within that exit lane that is something that I noticed on multiple exits like this it is weaving a little bit so first it doesn't want to then it goes too much to the right lane marking then it tries to find the center again it's not it's not as as um, how should I put it it's not as as fluid as uh, as I would like it to be so here we see again how long does it take before the car why is it stopping what the hell the car was completely stopping when the car in front of me had already turned way out of sight of the car wow that was weird and completely unnecessary Tesla another bug you need to fix here again the car in front of me is moving to the left my car is slowing down slowing down slowing down and only now gradually passing by that should be made a lot more effective to be usable in daily driving now I don't have another car behind me but if that were the case that guy would be annoyed by me not moving on while the car in front of me was uh, already yeah outside of my lane so you all know what's coming next the lane shift and let's hope we get a green light at the traffic lights there and we can continue it's still green at the moment let's hope it stays that way oh it's turning orange so we'll have to uh, power through it once we get through the red light but we're first in line so as long as there's no car in front of me coming from the left side here I should be fine okay looking good so let's try to get come on give me autopilot autopilot on braking a bit oh <laughs> I actually had to intervene there it was going way too close to the curb for me to trust it and it has been rather trustworthy for the past updates couple of updates at least so 
small regression there and it's something that I notice in general as well is that the car has become more lazy in steering for some reason um, and there it needs to have quick reactions of course uh, making it not so good in this particular update so for the final part we have the disappearing lane markings and I already noticed that um, there's a car parked behind the lane markings so let's see what it does there will it hit that car yes or no so here we are it's no it was going to hit that car wow so the drivable space the calculation of the drivable space for the car that is something that well it's it's not working good at the moment uh, perhaps it's the autopilot 2 configuration that i have and it works better on uh, hardware 3. all right time for another conclusion and first the hill crest i got the impression that it was a little bit better it stuck more to the right side of the road where the lane markers were disappearing at the bottom of that so i think there's a slight improvement on that level the S-curve, no improvement whatsoever. Maybe in terms of getting it back in check uh, a little bit sooner, but it was still going into the opposing lane, uh, making for a very dangerous situation had there been any traffic at that time. Um, highway exiting, automatic exiting, that seemed fine. Uh, no problem there. And then of course, at the end, we had that uh, lane shift which was way too close to the curb to actually trust it uh, so I had to intervene there and also with the lane markings that were disappearing uh, on that road it is again uh, a problem that the drivable section or a car that is not fully on the road is not detected as an obstacle and the car would just hit the side of that parked car uh, without any warning whatsoever so no beeping no collision alert whatever so the car was just not aware that there was another car in the way basically uh, that is really not good and that is something that Tesla urgently needs to fix as I said earlier maybe it's better with hardware 3 I'll try to get a hardware 3 uh, car and do the same test on the same um, autopilot version or firmware version um, but for autopilot 2 it also needs to work in uh, in these conditions of course now besides that the update gives you a small information screen that lists the type of uh, motors that you have so the front motor in my case induction for a raven car that will probably say permanent magnet or something like that but it also lists which hardware you have uh, so thank you tesla for rubbing it into my face that i still have hardware 2.0 with no upgrades to uh, hardware 3.0 nowhere inside uh, at this moment so I really need that new hardware so uh, chop chop make that happen make sure that we get upgraded and all cars that I've paid for uh, the full self drive package over three years ago let us get the update that we deserve because we already paid for it um, but other than that not so much a good update, uh, little changes, um, bugs that need to be fixed, definitely, uh, and they need to be fixed urgently. Uh, but other than that, it's still the same, more or less, as what the previous update was. So if you like my tests and you like my video, uh, give the videos a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel using that button down there. And uh, make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos that are coming out with more tests of autopilot uh, and road trips also, for example. Uh, for now, I thank you for watching and I see you guys next time. Bye-bye.